everybody, it's Tanya and welcome to today's video. So today I have received an exciting package, which is this one. And I know what is inside because it's uh, my Russian classics. So recently I have been reading uh, Idiot by Dostoevsky and also recently started In the First Circle by Alexandra Solzhenitsyn. And I realized that I actually really miss Russian classics. <laughs> I, miss, I miss Russian classics, I miss reading in Russian. Um, and I just, yeah, I want to increase my Russian classics collection. So that's why I ordered um, quite a few Russian classics. I don't remember how many, but uh, yeah, you will know by the end of the video. So this, this is them, all of them and I am very excited to show them to you. So they, these are obviously Russian editions of Russian classics that I ordered because I will be reading them in Russian. Some of them have English translation. If they have an English translation, I will insert like a picture of an English copy here. If they don't have an English translation or if I cannot find one, I feel like I will write it. I will write it here in the video so you will know. But then you can also check for yourself uh, because maybe I just didn't find. So yeah, check for yourself if you are interested. I will write the name of the author also in the video when I will be showing you the book. Now, without further ado, let's open this box together. Here. Oh, here they are. You see, with this Russian shop, they pack it in like plastic, so that's that's a shame. But the books are beautiful. I ordered all of them in like the same edition. I like these editions. Um, you. You've seen these editions before, so this is the edition of the idiot that I'm reading and the... Oh, this one. So it's like these editions, they're like colorful, they're very cheap as well. That's like the beauty of them, they're very cheap, but they're also comfortable to read. Most of them are paperbacks, but they also have a few hardbacks recently. So. Uh, yeah, I, I prefer hardbacks, uh, but majority of their books are actually in paperback, which I'm not mad about because they're really cheap <laughs> that way. So I also ordered them. And yeah, they are like, they're quite floppy. Uh, yeah, they're, they're very comfortable to read. Start, okay. So first package here. The first book I have is by Ivan Bunin. Ivan Bunin, he is mostly famous for his um, romantic short stories, or I don't know if it's he's mostly famous in Russia, but like I knew, I knew him <laughs> because of his romantic stories, which are like very also sensual in a way. I was recommended them actually by uh, the school where, which I was attending, uh, librarians. She was a big fan of those like romantic stories. And so I learned about kind of him through her, and so I read his romantic stories. They're, they're very romantic, they're beautiful, but also very sensual. This is his kind of uh, autobiography. It is said to be the most, the most cruel and painful and personal book by Bunin. And in this book he talks about Bolshevism and the new regime and the revolution that happened in Russia. So he, he lived through revolution and he emigrated after it because he did, he just really didn't accept and he only criticized the new regime and like in this kind of blurb it is said that he had not a single positive word to say about the revolution and people who organized it and the new regime that was set in the country. So this book is very very critical of that new regime and so he talks about his experiences of living through the revolution and seeing the revolution with his own eyes first in Moscow and then moving to Odessa and then from Odessa immigrating to Europe and I think he lived in France after immigration. Bunin also received a Nobel Prize in literature. Um, I don't know in which year, but yeah, he, he had the Nobel Prize. So yeah, this is the book that I'm very 
keen to explore and very keen to read uh, it's not a very long one um, and I'm very curious about it because it's not that those romantic stories which are like not really my cup of tea <laughs> like not really my preference uh, so I am very curious to explore his more serious I would say writing and his more serious side as a writer so Ivan Bunin and then the second book which uh, was in the kind of package is The Gentry Nest by Ivan Sergeyevich Turgenev. Turgenev is a very famous, like just huge writer in Russian classics. We study him in school. Um, in my school we studied his fathers and sons. We didn't study this work. Um, but it's also a very famous one and I know for sure that this one has an English translation. This is one of his saddest works because it tells the story of a tragic love, broken hopes and a difficult fate and a difficult life of a good and a very intelligent person uh, but a person who makes a mistake and then he has to pay for this mistake till the rest of his life. So that's uh, what I know about the book from the blurb so far. I read it. I read it in school. Like we didn't study but I just read it for myself but I don't remember, like I remember nothing from this book, like zero. So yeah, it's definitely due to a reread uh, and not even refreshing, but just like learning again of what the book was about. I remember I liked it, I remember I really enjoyed it, uh, but yeah, for some reason it just, it's like, it's completely out of my memory. So yeah, Ivan uh, Sergeyevich Turgenev, uh, Gentry Nest. Then, the next package. Oh. The next package is exciting. Oh, look at that. All together. So this is one uh, hardback. These two are paperbacks, but this one is hardback. So let's start with the hardback because it is a beautiful, a beautiful edition of Master and Margarita by Mikhail Afanasyevich Bulgakov. Again, I read this book in school. We studied it in school. I remember like certain episodes. I remember very little from it actually. But recently I read uh, Dog's Heart. I have a different um, book, not of this novel, but like different works by Bulgakov. And so I read Dog's Heart from that. It's a short novella, very short novella. And I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. And I realized that Bulgakov probably is my author. I haven't read a lot from him. In school I only read Master and Margarita. Um, don't remember liking it very much, but I was like, what, 15, 16? You know, you cannot always at that age appreciate good works, even though like majority of my class, my, not everyone in my class were readers. Actually, I think there was like just one girl who was like, actually really into reading. The rest of the people, they were just like, they read because they had to for the school, but even they really enjoyed this novel. They were like, this is so good, this is so interesting, it was great. So even, you see, even people who are not actually readers really enjoy this book. I, for some reason, didn't like it very much. Don't I don't even remember why I didn't like it very much. I think I didn't like it because there was a story of the master and then it would be interrupted by the story of Yeshua. Um, and I think I didn't like this, this like a shift of stories. I would prefer at that time to follow just one story. Uh, but yeah, I am very excited to finally give this book another read and try it again. And I really, I hope, I really hope I will like it, especially because I really enjoyed his dog's heart. I still, um, I, yeah, I need to read Bulgakov. I need to read more of Bulgakov. So, and this is a very beautiful edition. I really like this edition. Um, it also has a lisse right here. So it's going to be beautiful to read. Yeah, Bulgakov. Master and Margarita. I think this book needs no introductions. <laughs> Everybody knows about this book. It has multiple translations into English, so I don't think you need to be told what it's about. So this is a little bit later in the day. I had to stop for a short while, so if the lighting is different, that's why. But the next book that I received is Slova Apolku Igoreve. The, um, a Tale of Igor's Campaign. This is how it's translated into English. This is a piece of Russian medieval literature. It was written approximately in the 12th century and it recounts a story of this Russian prince Igor 
who had like a campaign against a small kind of not tribe but like a town which was supposed to pay taxes to him but they didn't and so he went like against the town the tale itself it's an epic poem but it's a short one so this collection actually includes a few other historical sources such as for example life of alexander nevsky alexander nevsky is another russian prince like князь we call them князья so like russian князь um, and then we have like a word of some religious person andrei zatochnik and then russian truth something like that so it has a few other historical sources as well which is going to be interesting but we did study the poem the tale of Igor's campaign in school when I was like very young I was 10 years old maybe 11 years old so very young of course I don't remember anything anymore so I need to reread it and when I saw this coffee on the website I was like yes I need it I didn't know that it included so many other sources as well so that's going to be interesting the interesting thing is that the translation of this work is done by Lihachov yes by Dmitry Sergeyevich Lihachov uh, whose book I also have, so you will see it later on in the hall. But Dmitry Sergeyevich Lihachov was like the biggest and the most famous scholar of ancient Russian language and ancient well, medieval Russian literature. Like, not ancient Russian, like old Russian language, I guess. It's not that ancient. So, yeah. Uh, this is going to be like really interesting to read and I'm very excited for this one. And then another book we have by Nikolai Semenovich Liskov. And it's uh, Achirovny Stranik, it's like Charmed Traveler, something like that. Not sure. So it's something like, if it's like a word for a word translation, it would be something like Charmed Traveler. Nikolai Semenovich Liskov, he, Leo Tolstoy called him one of the most Russian Russian writers, a uh, writer who understood like a kind of Russian character the best and who could describe Russian character the best. Chekhov actually also wrote about him and he said that Liskov had much bigger talent than I do, like Chekhov, than Chekhov does, <laughs> did. He was also criticized by critics because of the style of his language. They were writing that his language was kind of very too flowery, you know, kind of too stylized, too kind of overworked. However, he didn't accept that critique. He said that, like in response to that critique, he answered that a lot of people, academic people and um, professors, write their works in this super complicated, super kind of you know, not a simple language. And he's like, why do you exp why do you force me to write in something like simple? He was like, I am not Leo Tolstoy. I cannot write in that simple prose. I need to work in a more complicated prose. Like it's just not my type of language. So that's kind of was his response. So he didn't accept those accusations. Uh, in terms of topics of his works, he was also kind of different from other writers because you can see with Leo Tolstoy, for example, or with Turgenev, that they were writing mostly about gentry, gentry families. In case of Liskov, he was interested in uh, this kind of re religious community of Russia, so like monks, priests, uh, people of that sort uh, and also he was interested in people of Mishanstva. I don't know how to translate it into English it's not they, those are not gentry people so they're like lower in class they are free so they are not peasants like they don't belong to anybody they mostly lived like in cities and they were either um, shop owners or like workers in the city so they were not like and they were not as rich as like gentry families for example so and he was kind of interested in the life of this uh, layer of the population 
so kind of topics of his works were different as well i haven't read anything by liskov before we didn't study him in school so i'm very curious and excited to explore his language and i want to see how he writes this particular collection it contains three novellas the first novella the title novella the charmed traveler was actually initially conceived as a short story when he was traveling around Ladarska lake it's like a lake around saint petersburg from that lake he went to valam valam is an island where was like a famous big monastery and when he traveled there he conceived this idea of writing a short story about a monk from the monastery um, the first story he submitted wasn't accepted by the literary journal where he wanted to publish it because they said that it was kind of raw so they wanted him to work more on this short story and so in a year like next year he submitted a novella so the short story turned into this novella and it's something about kind of spiritual um search i guess of this monk uh, but it's also kind of like a travels i as far as i know like his travels around i don't know russia or some oh it's kind of a spiritual i guess book but also you know showing russia of that time that's kind of what i imagine it to be so i need to read it and see what it actually is uh but yeah it's actually interesting and i'm very much looking forward to this book then another book is very exciting is very exciting remember when i was talking to you about the tale of Igor's uh, campaign i said that the work was translated by mm -hmm, dmitry sergeyevich lihachev Russian scholar. He was just a very fascinating person. He was born in St. Petersburg, like in the early 20th century. From his very, very childhood, he was interested in uh, literature. He loved books. His parents didn't, op didn't approve, but he didn't really listen to them. And at the age of 16, at the age of 16 he enters the university and he starts studying at two departments um, of like russian language and um slavic kind of german languages and so like, later on he received like two diplomas but uh, when he graduated he was arrested because they thought that he belonged to this kind of um, student organization that was kind of against the revolution and against the party so he um, he spent a lot of his life not a lot but like f five years at least he spent in prison uh, and then from prison he was sent also to the first camp uh, in the camp he never stopped studying and researching language he actually wrote a few works about language while he was in prison and the interesting thing not prison camp when he was in the camp later on when he was talking about his life there he said that it was in that um camp that i learned that every person is a person because he met different people there he met actual criminals but he also met educated, very intelligent and accomplished people. And I think that, I don't know like the details, but there was an accident when uh, they saved his life in that camp. And so it, it was after that accident that he said that like, I learned that every person is a person. So that was interesting. And he lived in St. Petersburg through all the conundrums of the 20th century Russia. So we are talking revolution. He was saying that he watched revolution from his window. Re he watched revolution happen from his window. Like I said, he was in the prison and in the camp. And then when he was released, the Second World War happened and he since he was living in St. Petersburg, he lived through the siege of St. Petersburg, which was just a horrendous time in the history of the city. So many people died. It was There was hunger. There were people dying in the street. There were just like kind of dead bodies lying in the street. Like if you read like the account in history, it was a terrible time. And he lived through that and he never stopped 
researching and working like he was very passionate about um, his field of study which was like Russian old language and medieval literature and so this book that I am holding here is his memories of his life and it's history of St. Petersburg the city through, through his eyes and through like the experiences his own experiences and experiences of his family so i'm super excited for this book i saw it and i was like yes i want to read he has a, a few books actually out he has like philosophical also contemplations about life what else i forgot ah he has letters to the youth uh, so I want to kind of read that as well. So yeah, Lihachov is a fascinating figure. I want, uh, I need to, I never read anything by him before, uh, but he's just very interesting and I like, I have so much respect for him just from what I know about him, um, how prolific he was as a scholar, as a writer, as a translator. So I definitely need to read more about him. Uh, and yeah, so this is going to be my first book by Lihachov. And then I have a trilogy. Well, it's a trilogy, but it's like, it's in two books, but the, the first, this copy contains two books in the trilogy. So this, uh, what's the English name? So the Russian name is Hajdenia Pamukam. What's the English name? The Road to Calvary. That's what I found on Wikipedia. The Road to Calvary. First of all, I really like like the covers and the color scheme of this edition. I feel like they're really beautiful. Uh, this is by Alexei Nikolaevich Tolstoy. So Russian literature has three, Tolsto three Tolstoy. We have obviously Leo Tolstoy, we have Konstantin Tolstoy, and we have Alexei Tolstoy. So this is Alexei Tolstoy. This is one of his most famous work. It tells about lives of Russian intelligentsia before during and after the revolution. We follow two sisters who are initially are from Samara. Samara is a city, actually, it's a big city, big city in Russia. They're initially from there, but then they move to St. Petersburg. And this book, like this trilogy, is about them navigating the city throughout, like throughout the Silver Age of Russian literature. So they meet some poets and writers, um, and then revolution happens and all those like terrible events that they have to live through. I don't know much about like this book and plot of it. Uh, that's kind of what I know. Uh, but I've been looking at it for so long and I finally decided to get it because I'm always afraid that the book will be sold out and it might not be printed again or something like that. And when I saw them, I'm like, I need them. So yeah, now I have these two beautiful copies and I'm very happy. Alexei Tolstoy one small package. This is edition of Fedor Dostoevsky's Diaries. So they're right. Uh, the book is called The Diaries of a Writer. This is a collection of his different publications, which contain his uh, kind of thoughts on life in Russia of that time. Um, also analysis of the public life of that time. Uh, his contemplation about national character and about people and about meaning of art and meaning of Christianity, like significance of art and significance of Christianity. So that's going to be really interesting and it also says that like his um, publications are actually also might be even more interesting than his novels. So I'm very I'm very keen to explore this book as well. And it's short, it's quite short, it's just like 200 something pages. So Dostoevsky. Then the biggest the biggest package. Okay. So we have one more Dostoevsky and this is his uh, novellas and short stories. So let's see what novellas the, he has here. Gospodin Прохарчин. Роман в девяти письмах. Слабое сердце. Честный вор. Ёлка и свадьба. Дядюшкин сон. Oh. I haven't heard of any of them, actually. So that's interesting. That's going to be interesting. I haven't read Dostoevsky's short novellas or short stories, like, ever. So, and you see, these titles, I haven't even heard of them before. So that's going to be interesting. Also, the edition is beautiful. So one more Dostoevsky. I have two Dostoevskys. And then 
I didn't expect this book to be so big, but it's it's actually beautiful. I really like like the cover, the cover, this image. This is Chingiz Aitmanov. Chingiz Aitmanov, he is a Kyrgyz writer. So he's from Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan was like part of Soviet Union at that time. So he like, can be considered also like Soviet writer, but yeah, he has always lived and he is like, from Kyrgyzstan initially. He worked in Kyrgyz language and also in Russian language. He was a very, very prolific writer, but he was also a politician, I think. I think he was a politician as well. This is one of his best work. It's not like it's just a novella. So this book is a collection of a few novellas. Three. It's a collection of uh, three novellas. So the title novella is called Dog Running Along the Sea. And Genghis Atmanov, he is famous for using a lot of mythological motifs in his writing. He didn't consider himself to be a fantasy writer. He considered, his, he considered himself to be a realist writer, but kind of in an epic kind of scope. And so he used a lot of mythology in his work. In this particular novella, he uses the... Um, he talks about uh, this kind of tribe of people living in Sakhalin Island, I think, or like around like Ahotskaya Moria, so like Ahotskaya Sea. It's in like, kind of far east of Russia, so like next to Sakhalin. I'm not sure if they live in Sakhalin or not, or in the mainland of Russia, so some but like in that region. The mythological context is that kind of this tribe took um, their roots from this woman fish who was the initial creator of all kind of life. So that's interesting. I don't, I'm not sure like where is this myth comes from. So I'm curious to just kind of learn, dive into it and explore more about him and his works. I haven't read Chinggis Aitmanov before, so it's going to be interesting. And then we have one more hardback edition, which I am very happy with. This is a blog by Ivan Alexeyevich Goncharov. I read this book for school, we studied it in school. I quite, I even enjoyed it. I really found it interesting. I didn't quite understand what was going on and why the main protagonist was the way he was, because he is just like a very lazy person, like he practically doesn't move, he is incapable of making decisions, he is incapable of doing, like literally kind of doing anything, he is not sick, he is just like, I don't know, he is like completely inactive. So that's what I, when I was reading it, I found it really strange. And on the contrary, his friend was like on the contrary, like a very active you know, person constantly doing something and like, you know, caring for everybody. But then later, like we studied and it turns out that it was like a thing in the 19th century Russian literature when they were writing about this kind of extra person, someone who is educated and kind and he has all this like, kind of good qualities to himself, but he is an extra person, like he doesn't find his place in the society, he doesn't know what to do in the society, how to behave, and yeah, he's just kind of completely lost in this society. Oblomov is a representation of that character. Uh, I need, to, I don't remember like much what happens, just remember that there will be like a love story, uh, he will fall in love with like a woman, um, and yeah, I don't remember more about it, but I remember really enjoying it. And Goncharov, he wasn't very prolific, but he was very talented. He also worked as like an official in the government. He was uh, not, I mean, he was a critic, but he was also censor. He was a censor. So that was kind of very uh, demanding position. So that's why he wasn't able to dedicate much time to writing, which he talked actually about this in one of his, oh, in his book, um, his autobiography. He, interestingly enough, in that biography, he wrote that he accused a few Russian writers, including Turgenev, of plagiarizing his work and um, preventing him from becoming like this world famous author. So yeah, I need to kind of 
learn more about him. I want to find maybe a biography or something about him. But yeah, first I need to read his works. So this is Oblomov, beautiful copy, and I'm pretty happy with this. And I have Chekhov, his step. So it's also a collection of his short stories, I think. Novellas. It's a collection of his novellas, four novellas. Also, we read Chekhov in school. We read his plays. Uh, I recently also reread, actually, Dadia Vanya, um, Cherry Orchard. So I really like his plays. Uh, and now I need to explore more of um, his novellas and later on short stories. Vikenti Vikentievich Virisayev. <laughs> didn't read anything by him before. He is a writer from 20th century Russia. Uh, this is one of his most famous works, which is like Notes of a Doctor, where he was a doctor himself, like the writer, he was a doctor himself. And in this book, he kind of, it's a little, it's kind of autobiographical. So, and he discusses a lot of kind of problems that young doctors face and that doctors in general face. And he talks about how doctors need to not only be doctors, but they also have to be these kind of politically active people who stand... Um, kind of their job is not to only treat people, but to also eliminate everything from their work that prevents them from like kind of treating people and helping people as much as possible. So that's why they not only need to kind of spend their time in the hospital, they also need to kind of be active in like social life to kind of, you know, protect their rights, protect kind of the environment that they think they should have, something like that. Again, I haven't read, I just read about the book. So that's going to be interesting, and just the fact that it's like his autobiographical-ish work is going to be fun, and also in one of the chapters he uh, describes experiments on people. Here he also talks about like medical experiments on people, how atrocious that is, how like terrible it is and how it shouldn't happen. So yeah, this book I'm excited. And then the last, the last book that I have of Russian classics. I'm not sure if it's translated. It's not, um, it's not even like a fiction work. It's more like a historical um, writing work. So it's Lev Nikolaevich Gumilev and Atrusi Krasi is from Rus to Russia. And it's, yeah, kind of his work describing history of Russia throughout like a few centuries. Yeah, he wrote like from the uh, Kiev, like from the times when Kiev was the capital city till the times of Peter the Great. This book is the last what the author ever wrote. And it's written in like very lively and interesting manner, which the author himself called experimental. So I hope it's going to be an engaging and easy read, because I'm not very good with like reading historical kind of textbooks, because I don't know, they're just, they're just very dry for me and I never remember things from them. Uh, but then if it's going to be maybe something you know, lively and entertaining. So hopefully I will, you know, learn something. So this is very exciting, Lev Gumilov. I'm very much looking forward to this. I'm actually much, really much looking forward to all of these books. Let me show you them. Because like all together, their spines look just beautiful. They look just beautiful. Okay, I will not be holding up, up all of them. I have like four more. but. This is what they look like when they're all together. I like their spines. So, yes, this was my haul of Russian classics. You see? Four more. How colorful. Beautiful. So, this was my haul of my new Russian classics. Oh, actually, five more. I have Liskov. Five more. So yeah, this was <laughs> my haul of Russian classics. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm very excited for all of these books. Hopefully you also found some interesting Russian classics that you want to explore. I hope at least some of them will be translated into English. But some of them are definitely translated into English. Some of them are definitely. I'm just not sure like how many exactly of them, but Yes, some of them are definitely translated. So, yes, I'm very excited for all of them. Explore all of them. 
I need to finish the idiot, finish the this one in the first circle, and then I will jump into more Russian classics, and I'm looking forward to this. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments which books piqued your interest, which books you want to try and find and read for yourself. Let me know what books you're currently reading, or maybe you have some favorite Russian classics. Also, let me know about that. And for now, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a very good day. I hope you are staying safe, reading good books and enjoying them. And I will see you soon in my next videos. Thank you much for watching. Bye.